Sony A7S III, Canon R5. Are cinema cameras even worth buying anymore? Let's talk about it. What's up everybody, welcome back to NBC Arts. On this channel we talk about filmmaking gear, tips and tutorials, and today we're talking about whether if cinema cameras are even worth buying anymore now that the Canon R5 and Sony A7S III are out on the market, offering features that were previously not really thought to be possible with those small of cameras. So I'm not saying that you should go out and only buy these kind of small mirrorless cameras and never consider, you know, cinema cameras because cinema cameras do generally cost a lot more than these cameras. But I still personally think that cinema cameras are something that, you know, every video guy, whether you're a cinematographer, videographer, whatever you want to call yourself, I think cinema cameras are definitely worth the buy if video is your main focus because at the end of the day cinema cameras are strictly video cameras not photo cameras that just happen to do really good video so i won't be the first one to admit that these cameras are amazing but there are a few features in cinema cameras that small mirrorless cameras like these just don't offer and the first one and most obvious one to me is the form factor now for me, form factor can go a couple of different ways. Um, if you're a run and gun shooter, a smaller, lighter camera body would be a lot better. One with really good IBIS so you can get in there, get your shots and get out, especially if you're filming in places you're not supposed to. We've all done it. Don't tell anybody though. When I switched to a cinema camera from a small mirrorless camera, the form factor was a huge difference. All of a sudden I was going from this like small, really light camera to like a bigger, heavier setup. And, and, and for me, it was a big benefit because I don't shoot, I shoot a lot of handheld and having more weight on a camera that doesn't have IBIS will take away some of those micro jitters you see on like smaller mirrorless DSLR cameras that don't have IBIS. I mean, now with the R5 and Sony A7S III, like those, the IBIS in those cameras are phenomenal. So you, you can get some really good handheld shots without any shake, but if you don't have any lenses that are like stabilized and you're not, you know, you don't have any IBIS in your camera, like, you know, a, a bigger cinema camera will take out some of those smaller jitters and that could be a benefit for you. Another benefit of a bigger camera is more room to move around and more buttons on the outside of the camera to control it. Um, when you get into kind of bigger productions, there's gonna be like two or three people on the camera at all times. You're gonna have your first AC pull and focus, you're gonna have your camera operator and you're gonna have you know, your, your DP kind of like behind the camera kind of directing where everything is gonna go, right? Um, so if you have a small little camera and everybody's crowding around, it could create kind of an environment where there's not a whole lot of room to move and everybody's getting in each other's way. With wireless technology today, 
you know, an AC could be on a completely different side of set, just pulling focus away from the camera, not even be anywhere near the camera with wireless video and uh, pulling focus wirelessly. Um, but if you're kind of on a lower production, lower budget production, you, you might not be able to get away with that. So having a bigger camera where people can have room to kind of mount their the monitors they need and get to the controls that they need, um, a cinema camera kind of offers that form factor for them and kind of makes things go a little bit smoother. And on the other hand, having all these controls and buttons on the outside of the camera makes it a lot easier to change settings as you need to without having to go diving into the menus. I love the fact that I have a button for ISO, a button for focus, a button for um, zebras and all this other stuff for exposure on my C200 and I don't have to go into the menus and turn them on and off like I would possibly have to do with a small mirrorless camera. Another big reason why I like to use cinema camera is the port selection that comes on these cameras. With smaller mirrorless cameras, you're gonna have more consumer grade ports like 3.5 millimeter jacks for audio and HDMI for video output or input. Well, with a cinema camera, you upgrade to things like SDI and XLR. And the good thing about these ports is that they're A, a lot more robust, and they lock. Now, locking ports may not seem like a super big deal, but when you're on set and you're kind of going fast and there's a lot of moving parts, you know, things can get, courts can get yanked, uh, images could be lost, you know, if you tear your HDMI out from Video Village, like, you know, and your client can lose feed, your, your wire, your AC could lose feed, like, you know, just a lot of things can go wrong. And when you have locking ports like XLR and SDI, a lot, that's, that's a lot less likely to happen. And the other great part about having an XLR cable on your cameras, you're gonna get a balanced input to your camera. What a balanced input means is that you're gonna have a lot cleaner signal going from your microphone to your camera and you won't have a whole lot of background noise because the signal is grounded with that third pin, that third XLR pin. Like right now, I'm recording from my microphone directly into my C200 with an XLR connection and I know the, the feed is gonna be somewhat clean because of that uh, balanced XLR input. Another great benefit for XLRs is the fact that you get to use a lot more professional microphones, one like the one I'm using now, the Aperture Deedier, the Sennheiser MK416 or Rode NTG2 or, or whatever you may be using at the time. You just have a lot more microphone selection and on top of that, these ports give phantom power and phantom power is great so you don't have to power your your microphones off batteries and there's a lot less things you have to charge and and check before you start shooting other features that i like on a cinema camera that don't come on mirrorless cameras like the r5 and the sony a7s3 is the biggest one built-in nd filters like those uh, every camera should come with built-in nd filters like i don't understand how they can fit built-in ND filters into like a little RX100 uh, camera, but not put it on the A7S III. Like that was the one thing that that camera was missing to make it just a slam dunk for video shooters, 100%, because all of us use ND filters when shooting outside to get correct exposure. And that's a huge benefit to have on cinema cameras is those built-in ND filters. Now, not all cinema cameras, like the Reds, they don't come with built-in ND filters, so you'll have to use kind of like a map box in front or whatever. But a seat, but the Canon Cinema series, they come with built-in ND filters. Arri Alexas do. Um, the Sony FX, FX9, FS7, FS5, those come with great variable ND filters. Those things are really, really cool. But just having these ND filters will save you on set so many times. It's so nice not to have to remember to take my filter bag with me every time I go out shooting on set and I don't have to spend all my money on external ND filters either. I can spend some of that money on more creative filters depending on what kind of look I wanna get for the video that I'm shooting. If I, Whether I'm shooting a dream sequence for a short film and put a ProMist in front or if I wanna um, have a circular polarizer in my map box or on the front of my lens, you know, other that money can go towards creative filters versus having a necessity like an ND filter. The next thing we're gonna be talking about is the most hot button topic on the internet right now concerning cameras, and that is overheating. Yes, cameras overheat, everybody. Let's just all get over it, okay? It's no secret that the Canon R5 and R6 have a little bit of an overheating issue. Not so much the R6 as much as the R5, but what are you to expect when Canon goes ahead and puts 8K in a tiny little mirrorless body that doesn't really have a whole lot of room for the heat to escape? Um, that's the huge that's the biggest benefit of cinema cameras is that they are designed 
to give you that high quality image. Um, sure, the body's gonna be a little bit bigger, but that leaves them a lot more room to design a camera that has a proper cooling system in there that um, has fans and bigger heat sinks so that all this heat can escape while it's giving you such high quality images like 8K RAW or um, even 4K Cinema RAW light like on the C200. Now, Sony on the other hand has learned from their mistakes and they did create a camera like the A7S III that does not overheat like their previous camera. However, I owned an A6500, as most of you know, before this, and I never had an overheating issue as long, the, the whole time I owned the camera, like my camera never overheated once, and as I'm recording this video right now, it is like 100 plus degrees like every single day during the day, and it's like, it, it gets super hot, so Utah is one of those places where cameras are going to be primed to overheat for sure, but I never had an issue, so when looking at an R5 or an R6, if overheating is a big issue, but yet you need that higher quality kind of codec, or if you wanna shoot raw or whatever, like looking at a cinema camera makes a lot of sense to me, just because those cameras are designed to take a beating on set and never overheat, never really cause issues. I mean, sure, reds have some issues, Canons do, like every camera is, has like issues, and, and, it, and you'll never know if a camera's gonna break or not, but, Having that peace of mind with a cinema camera, me going on set having confidence that the camera will not overheat or shut down while filming is a big, big plus. So I'm not saying that you shouldn't go out and buy the Sony a7S III or the Canon R5 or R6 or whatever. I think those are great cameras and if they work for your workflow, get them. I think that's an absolutely great decision. I'm just trying to give you as much information as possible because the more information you have, the more likely you'll be able to make a better decision when buying a camera because all these cameras that we're discussing today are extremely expensive, especially if you get into the cinema camera territory. Like my C200 is about double the price of what the Canon R5 is or even the R6, you know? Like it's not an, it's not, a very inexpensive thing to buy like you're getting into a very expensive hobby or profession or whatever and investing in gear is a very important decision so the more knowledge you have the better off you're going to be in the long run well guys that's about it for this video if you like the video leave a like and a comment down below if you want to see more from me make sure you hit that subscribe button ring that bell for notifications so you don't miss a single video i produce thanks again so much for watching guys and as always i will see you in the next video